So here's the drum I'm cleaning up today. Uh, unfortunately, I had a whole video done and edited and like a nitwit, deleted it and deleted the video that made up the longer video. So I was pretty much screwed. Um, but there was, a, there was some clips left and I think it was enough to give you the rundown on this whole process and you get to see the finished product. So stick around and check it out. Thanks. This is the Sona 506D. Got this a couple weeks ago with the Apple Candy Red set. And just like that set, this thing's completely filthy. It's got all kinds of dust inside the the hoops on the on the heads. Um, I don't think the chrome's ever been cleaned or polished or anything like that. So I'm gonna disassemble it. I'm gonna soak some of the pots overnight. Um, and then I'll come back tomorrow and do a hand polish with uh, chrome polish, everything. Uh, I like to disassemble these drums in the afternoon, like snares, stuff like that. That way I can soak the pots overnight, do my thing, come back in the morning and uh, polish everything up. That way you're not waiting a whole day or, or anything like that. Um, so I'm just gonna start taking the, the heads off. These are a little tricky because they have the slotted tension rods. So I, for now, I, I plan on making a bit for this that actually holds on to the to the tension rod. But for now, I'm just using a, a straight bit, it's like a straight screwdriver, bit, which works. You just got to kind of keep it centered on the tension rod, or it does that. faster than a tuning key. I'm not going to really bore you with the whole disassembly process. It's, it's, um, it's really pretty simple. The whole thing actually is pretty simple. It's just basically taking it all apart and cleaning it. Those are the snares. I don't know if those are original. Yeah, made in Taiwan, I guess not. Whoever had this bottom head, somebody had it cranked. I mean, really cranked. I like my bottom heads on the snares tuned up as well. Um, kind of like a, a timpani sound, high tension. But this thing, I mean, the rims are practically down with the the bearing edge on the snare that's how, how tight it is. It actually sounded really good. As it was. And even with what I just noticed is a broken head. That thing is in there. that pretty gross so yeah look at that awesome um like i said i'm not gonna bore you with the whole disassembly process um there's tons of videos like this out there um but i'll be back in a minute and i'll show you what I'm soaking it in, soaking the pots in and stuff like that.
So I just got done disassembling the drum. Uh, it's a Sonar D506, not a 506D. A little dyslexic at times. So all the small parts, like the tension rods, the washers, the little screws to the butt plate, the, even the butt plate itself had a little bit of rust on it. So I'm soaking that in this little container overnight in evapo rust. Um, I've tried several methods to get rid of rust on the small parts. And um, I've just found this stuff works great for me. Um, everybody has their preferred method. This is mine now. Um, the drum itself, I'm trying something a little bit different. I usually just soak the lugs in uh, Dawn, Blue Dawn, or I, I found other dish liquids um, have the same results. But I mean, if you're looking up this stuff or if you've seen other videos or even on the Facebook pages, whatever, um, everybody swears by Blue Dawn and I just happen to have some in the house. So I didn't take the swivel nuts out. I usually do, but these sonars have these little clips and I'm terrified of losing them. Um, or one going flying across my basement and never being able to find it again. So I left the swivel nuts in it. I can just polish them up, uh, polish around them and everything else. I'll, I'll get it fine. This is just for me. This isn't technically a complete restoration where I'm not re-chroming anything, nothing like that. I'm just cleaning it up. Um, so I'll, I'll show you really quick. I ended up finding this um, pretty good size. I guess it would be a laundry basket at um, Ocean State Job Lot. And uh, I'll just show you that real quick. I get the whole drum, the lugs, and the hoops uh, soaking. And I'll leave them soaking overnight. I'll show you, I'll show you it real quick. So I actually managed to get that down my basement stairs without killing myself or making a huge mess. Uh, it wasn't that light. I think next time I'll probably, um, if this works out oh, good, next time I'll probably use buckets to fill it or just um, leave it out in my garage as long as it's not freezing. Um, leave it out in my garage overnight soaking and just use the garden hose to fill it up. Um, if it works, if, if I'm always trying new stuff. Um, looking for whatever works best for me. So I've seen other people do this. So I figured I'd give it a try. Anyways, like I said, I usually just uh, bring the shell and the hoops up to the sink and use a sponge with um, dish liquid and just clean it off really good. Um, but I figured I'd try this and see what the results are. If the, if the results are better, I'll continue doing it this way. So that's it. Now uh, I'll get back at it in the morning and hopefully within a couple hours be playing it after, you know, polishing 10 lugs and the shell and, and the hoops and all that fun stuff. So I've come back in the morning and um, it came out pretty decent. I don't think the results are that much better. This is the stuff that I let soak in um, Evaporust overnight. Uh, everything came out really nice. Everything's shined up. I did rinse it off with uh, warm water and then hand dried everything. Um, I'm still going to hit it with chrome polish as I, I always do. I, I always polish all the chrome regardless of how shiny it looks now. Um, there's still some micro pitting in there and little little pits that that rusted here and there and the polish not only shines it but it it helps protect it from from that happening again um it's not gonna last forever but it's um certainly gonna help protect it for a for a good amount of time um the tension rods came out really nice somebody had some grease on them i don't know if that was factory or or what but um you can see it looks like rust, but it's not. It's it's just actually grease. Um, I just have a brass bristle brush here um, that I can take and get rid of most of that. A little bit of grease isn't going to hurt. Any. I'm going to add some lug lube to it when I reassemble it. So you can see that just got rid of most of that. 
So I'm just going to go over a couple things that um, unfortunately got deleted. For the chrome polish, I usually use Teradol Wax chrome polish. It's just what I've used for years. I know there's other brands out there that are equally as good. Uh, you just follow the instructions. You wipe it on, wait till it dries, glazes it up a little bit, and then you polish it off in circular motions. Um, I would go lightly the first time, and then if it needs a second time, um, do a, do a second polish on it rather than one aggressive one. Um, because if you, if you can see there's these little pits here and sometimes those will have rust in them or just contaminants and you don't want to take that and scratch the whole area around the drum. So I just go lightly the first one. And then if it needs a second polish, I do a second polish. Um, this one I did actually two on. Next up is the lugs. I uh, completely disassemble the lugs before I do the Dawn bath. These springs aren't coated, so these things will rust up the minute you take them out of the, the Dawn bath. And usually when you take them apart, this foam inside here, or, or whatever they have in there, is completely deteriorated after 40 or 50 years. So I buy this felt on Amazon. Um, buy it by the yard. It, it's pretty cheap. I uh, use it for felt strips on bass drums and everything. So I just cut little strips of that, wrap the spring in the felt, and then uh, put it back inside the casing. That keeps it from rattling around inside the casing. Um, I have had vintage drums that you can hear the springs rattling in it. It's just a good um, practice to, to rewrap them. I've seen people put cotton in there and other stuff. I just find this is super easy. Next up is the tension rods when you get to reassembling it. Uh, this is the little bottle I showed earlier. It's LP Lug Lube. This little bottle's lasted me four years and I'm not even halfway through it. You just need a tiny little drop on each tension rod. Um, I know some people use white lithium grease and all that. Um, I find this works really well for me. Uh, and it's not as messy when you're changing a head later on or whatever. The the grease or the white lithium grease or Vaseline, it um, it gets all over my hands. So I just stick with this stuff. Um, you could also use like a three-in-one oil, just a tiny drop. That's all you need. So I get the tuning pretty close. Um, putting the wires back on it now. Um, you just want to make sure your wires are, are centered. This one has a an adjustable butt plate, which is nice. Um, so I'm just putting the, the wires that came on it. I usually get the butt plate side set first. And um, I run the strainer maybe halfway down, maybe a little more than halfway down before I tighten anything so if you do it about halfway that leaves plenty of adjustment both ways Like I said, this has the added bonus of the adjustable butt plate. Um, make sure you get your wires centered. I mean, just look at that. Look at that chrome shine. Here's a 360 of the finished product. Um, this isn't the video I wanted to make, but it is what it is. No big deal. Um, you know, I know these videos are kind of amateurish and all that stuff. So hopefully they'll get better as they get more comfortable in front of the camera and behind the camera. And, uh, I'm just really doing this for fun and to share my collection with people, uh, with COVID and, uh, everyone's busy lives. Not a lot of people get to see my collection or um, 
anything like that. So um, I just figured this would be something different, something fun to do. Um, so if you've enjoyed this video or any of my other ones, if you want to hit the like button, subscribe, um, share the video uh, or any of my videos, uh, you can find me on Instagram, same username. Uh, a lot of drum pictures on there too. A lot of pictures of my projects that I've done um, and drums I buy and sell and uh, some that I, some of the ones I collect. So anyways, thanks for watching. Take care.